55. 55. Yeah, where's Right there.
Welcome to worship this Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, first of all, I uh, want to thank our musicians today, uh, Janet Johnson, Jeff Moon, and Janet Anderson. So we thank them for uh, sharing their gifts with us. Uh, also, a special thank you to our technology team this morning, Patty Goak, Bruce uh, Neubauer, and Tammy and Russ Victorian. We thank them all for their assistance. Um, it is a communion Sunday, so if you have not uh, gotten your communion kit from here, um, please make sure to grab one. And if you are at home, go ahead and gather elements now if you choose to, uh, so you have that ready for when we do have uh, communion during our service. We have currently um, paused the use of Sign Up Genius for um, signing up for worship services, uh, but we do still encourage social distancing and um, shots uh, for those uh, who are um, trying to get together and just try to make it safer for everyone. We are still doing the sign-in so that we can try to keep track of um, contract tracing just in case someone uh, would, might be infected somehow and we can uh, let other people know so that they can take care of that um, and so we can look out for our neighbor. So uh, we are not trying to look out and see who's been coming and keeping track that way. So anyway, um, let's see our next uh, announcement. Um, just Mercy will be showing today at 2 p.m. We'll be here. Um, otherwise, if you prefer not to come and uh, be a part of that in person, you can certainly watch that at home. There will be a discussion here at 4 p.m. And if you choose um, the Zoom option, you can do that as well to zoom into the discussion at 4. And uh, there is a link there, and you can also find the link online as well. Our next announcement is that there is a spaghetti dinner next Saturday from 3 p.m. until 6.30 p.m. to uh, benefit um, Chris Markfort and her family. Uh, she had a, a severe stroke and um, the, the toll uh, for them financially because of uh, all the medical expenses uh, can certainly be overwhelming. And so we want to assist them um, with that. Um, $10 per meal, 3 to 6.30. You do not need to make reservations or anything. Just show up and let us know how many meals that you want at the time, and we'll make sure that we get those for you. And then uh, there are also um, there are some coupon books that are fundraisers as well. One is a, a Coburn's coupon book, and the other is a, uh, a car wash booklet. Uh, so some great opportunities for you to save some money as well and then assist uh, Chris and her family. So uh, just wanted to let you know about that as well. And you can uh, touch base on that in the back uh, following worship service. And then uh, another thing that we are doing right now is uh, Comfort Center is looking for stuffed animals to put in care bags uh, or grief bags for uh, young people. Uh, kids and things like that. And um, so that way they have uh, something to, uh, to hang on to in the midst of uh, the grief that they might be going through. Uh, you can find the announcement inside your uh, bulletin this morning. Uh, you'll see that there are a whole bunch of uh, gently used and new stuffed animals out there already. And then they are also needing some Kleenex, bubbles, Sour Patch candy, Laffy Taffy, and for the younger set that knows what FLARP is, um, it's kind of a fun, noisy, kind of like Play-Doh, but anyway, lots of, uh, it can bring lots of giggles and laughs. So anyway, um, any other announcements that anyone wants to make sure our congregation is aware of right now? I do. All right, so Patty has something that she would like to share. Someone who is 
All right, and there will also be uh, that announcement in the newsletter. So if you forget the times that Patty just shared, make sure to check the newsletter. It is in there, and uh, you can save that um, and save the date for that and let others know about that as well. Any other announcements today? All right, with that being said, we will join in our opening uh, hymn, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. God has extended mercy and grace to us that is beyond our understanding. As we consider God's immense love for us, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, we wander off. We get distracted. We think we know better than you do. We find that our words our actions and our inaction end up hurting others, your creation, and ourselves. We run from your love and your care. There are times we think that we're better than others. We turn a blind eye to those in need, those in pain, those we don't understand, and those we don't want to take the time to understand. We become self-absorbed in our own lives, our own stuff, thinking only of what benefits us and not all of your beloved children and your creation. We don't like to admit our mistakes, our shortcomings, our faults, or the things we've done intentionally that harms others. And when it's hard to look at those things, we bury our head in the sand, not wanting to look at the truth of our feelings. Open our eyes and our hearts to your forgiveness, your grace, and your leading as we seek to love others 
as you love us. Amen. I invite you to spend some time in silent reflection and confession. God's love, grace, and forgiveness extends beyond what we can imagine and comprehend. Hear the good news. You are forgiven and loved. God's mercy and grace is for you. In baptism, we were made children of God. I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead as you remember that you are forever one of God's beloved. A reading from Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled, assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders. If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, when God raised, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. A reading from 1 John, the third chapter. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. 
How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The gospel according to John, the 10th chapter, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. So it's time for our children's message. And just a reminder, we are all children of God. <clears throat> so this is for all of us, uh, no age limit. So first, um, I want to let you know about an activity that I had with uh, fire and ice on Wednesday. Um, so it was fourth through sixth graders that were here and they took part in, it was called the amazing Psalm 23 race. Uh, and they had to go and find clues and stuff that were all related to Psalm 23. And so, uh, and eventually we got through the whole thing and it was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and uh, hope to be able to do something like that again with them. But anyway, um, so one of the things that is talked about in Psalm 23 is what? Does anyone have an idea what this might be? Yeah, what is this? A shepherd staff, exactly. So you get extra points. <laughs> All right, so um, some people might think that this is like for the singers or something if they're not doing a very good job and just pull them off the stage. No, that's not it, is it? Okay. So I was thinking about it. The, one of the um, verses says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm thinking, well, how can a stick be comforting? I started to think about it. So it could be used to pull some sheep out of something they might get stuck in, right? Maybe they're stuck in the brush and you can't quite get in there. Um, if you're tired out, I mean, you can just kind of lean on this thing, right? Need some help? Maybe you're gonna go for a walk and maybe you're the shepherd and you're just trying to make sure that you're clear, clearing out anything that might be in the tall weeds. Like, I'm not a fan of, like, snakes. And so if that would help clear some snakes out of the way, that would be a wonderful thing. Um, also, if you're walking on some ground that might be uneven, 
or might have some holes in it, you could check on that, right? So that might be another way that that staff could be comforting. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, think about those things and, and what that might look like. And sometimes we uh, need to think about things in new ways and ways that they do give comfort to us. And so I wanna remind each one of us too to think about some of the many, many different ways that God gives us comfort uh, when we see God as our shepherd. So anyway, uh, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that uh, Jesus is our shepherd, the good shepherd. And we just pray for those continual reminders of uh, your love and your care for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I saw a video clip on Facebook a few times over the last couple of weeks. The opening of the cliff, clip showed someone pulling on the leg of an animal. So I've seen enough of those videos on Facebook where they're trying to save a dog or a cat or something or from maybe it got stuck in a hole or in a cave or something like that. So that's what I was thinking I was going to be seeing. Well, the video backs out a bit, and I see that this person has got a hold of the leg of this animal, and it's wiggling around and stuff, and finally, they pull out a sheep that had gotten stuck in this ditch, and the ditch wasn't very wide, and so the sheep couldn't, couldn't get out, and it was a really long ditch, and so when the sheep got out, it was so excited and probably also scared and it decided that it was going to take off and run. So it went running this way, and there was kind of a fence along there. And then it went running back this way and jumped and landed right back in the ditch. So I wonder how many of you ever feel like you get stuck in the ditch, you get pulled out, and it's time to start running again. And you run and run and run, bam, right back in the ditch. You go from one thing to the next to the next, only to fall back in the ditch. Well, as I talk about things today and I share my sermon with you, I'm gonna shift gears compared to what I and sometimes other preachers will do. Sometimes we challenge you to act and to do things in a certain way or to, to think about ways that uh, you can be doing and loving your neighbor through your actions. I wanna slow you down a little bit. So let me take you back and make you think, how many of you have ever been on a plane before? Flown somewhere, okay? So I think quite a bit of you, maybe, maybe all of you. Uh, if you haven't though, I will remind you and those of you who are here um, of one of the things that takes place once you get all buckled in, they decide that you need to hear about instructions about if there's an accident. Now that brings comfort, right? You're gonna have an accident and they're gonna share about all that. Well, what they do though is try to prepare you in case there is an accident. You're instructed that there is a mask that could drop down and it will give you airflow, okay? And they tell you that you need to put your own mask on before you consider trying to help someone else. You need to take care of yourself so that you can effectively help take care of someone else. So I've probably flown maybe a dozen or so times and you know, I hear those words and they become kind of mundane. You know, like I've heard this before, yada, 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 okay, put my mask on, all that stuff. It's kind of like the Peanuts cartoon teacher, right? Wah, 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 you know, and you're thinking about all the other things and are you gonna read while you're on your flight? Are you gonna order something from the menu if it's a longer flight? Are you gonna, are you gonna um, be on your, on your computer or doing something? Are you gonna take a nap? You know, do you have the window seats so you can be watching and seeing everything that's going on? 
Well, let's say there is an accident. What happens? Are you the one that remembers to put on the mask? Or are you the one that decides you should do this thing and this thing and this thing and try to help everybody else out? And then you can't because you run out of steam. Psalm 23 today is a psalm that many of you have probably heard multiple times. Many of you maybe even have it memorized. But I'm going to take time and I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to do something that maybe many pastors might not invite you to do during a sermon. And I'm going to invite you to close your eyes when I'm reading it. Um, and when we do that, I want you to think about what each one of those words or each one of those phrases might be bringing to you when you close your eyes. I want you to think about what you would need personally to feel comforted and rejuvenated. When I get done, I will invite you to open your eyes back up again. And um, if you fell asleep, um, I'll probably let, just let you sleep because you probably needed it. Okay, I invite you to close your eyes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you didn't fall asleep, I invite you to open your eyes. And if you're sleeping, well, someone will nudge you when it's time to go home. Or you can help Bruce clean up or something. How many of us take heed and listen to those words? Or is it like the words that you hear on a plane, in one ear and out the other? Maybe you'll take the time to remember to put your oxygen mask on first. I think of the psalm in this way. It reminds us that God will care for us. We will be provided with what we need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. What images showed up for you? Was it nice to be able to rest in nature? To have the grass under your feet? For me, I imagine blue skies overhead. But what happens when we don't take time to slow down? Our bodies tell us in their own way that we need to do that. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes our minds get sick. We're stressed out. And our spirit can suffer. He leads me beside the still waters. 
living waters even. Water can be used to cleanse our bodies and our souls and fill us when we're thirsty. And those still waters can remind us of the need for calm rather than turbulence. He restores my soul. How many of us have ever felt like we're running on empty? You just need time to recharge, just like the batteries on our cell phones, in our cars, the games we play, on our cameras. We too need time to be restored and rejuvenated and recharged and refreshed. Sometimes all we need is five minutes. Sometimes we need longer vacations. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. God won't lead us down the wrong path. God will guide us if we allow ourselves to be led. We may not all be on the same path, but the destination is walking with God. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I shall not fear. We all have dark valleys and challenging times. Our dark times may not be the same as any other person in this room. We may also have shared experiences but we do have them. But our shepherd is there reminding us that we shouldn't fear and that the rod and the staff are there to comfort us. I had already talked about some of the uses and some of the things that came to mind that we can lean on that staff. and to give us comfort, and to give us something to grab onto. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God shares good things with us, even when our enemies don't think we deserve it. And God chooses to care for us. God anoints our head with oil. I thought about that and I kind of wondered, why would I want oil running all over my head? So I did a little bit of checking. Shepherds would place oil and pour oil on the sheep's head to protect them from sunstroke. And that oil would get in by their eyes and their nose and their ears, and it would protect them and repel insects and mites. I was amazed at even the little things, those things that we might seem at, to think of as an irritation, you know, the bug that's flying around our head, and the God wants to even take care of that for us. Even the little things matter to God. And the final verse of the psalm, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I think about how amazing that is to think of and what kind of comfort that brings. God has been taking care of each one of us to this point and will continue to do so as long as we live. As long as we live on this earth and the Jesus that we're celebrating in the resurrection, we know that we have eternal life. So God will take care of us into that space as well. 
Remember, God offers us rest. One of the Ten Commandments is remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. When is your Sabbath? Are you taking the time that you need to become rested and rejuvenated and recharged? We can best help ourselves and our neighbors when we take care of ourselves and rest so that we can continue in God's command that we love one another. When we're worn out, we can't do that. We are constantly reminded in Scripture that Jesus often goes away to pray. He knows that he needs to get away to unburden himself and to talk with God. If Jesus, the divine, needs rest, how much more so do we need it? We are not divine, even though we might think so at times. We are not superhuman, even though we might think so at times. Jesus is not only our example, but the one that we can turn to for rest and rejuvenation. I encourage each one of you to do that on a regular basis. Amen.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we bring our prayers before you because you promised to listen and answer in steadfast love. You know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen us so that we bear witness to your expansive love. You are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. We pray that you place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve and to crush any desire to overpower others. And please give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need, in need of food, of housing, of financial security, or kindness and support. Help us love one another in truth and action. Thank you to the care team at St. Claude Hospital who showed kindness and support during a member's medical procedure. We know that you are with all couples as they struggle with fertility. Give them the strength and perseverance. And you restore us to wholeness. Please help our community and our life together to give us vigor as a people of faith. And in the midst of challenges and opportunities, sicknesses and concerns, Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Today we keep in our prayers Chris, Tom, Matthew, Warren, Lorraine, Rick, Todd, Janine, Cindy, and Jean Etling. You hold us securely in your loving hands and in the assurance of resurrection hope we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Today, we, we remember the family of Justin who was murdered this last week, the 53 crew members of the Indonesian sub, and the family and friends of Pam Schulstedt. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever in the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. As we prepare for communion, if you have not yet received your elements, please let us know and we'll make sure that, uh, that you receive a commit if you, or a kit if you're here in person. If you're online, uh, take time to uh, uh, gather your elements now. <clears throat> let us pray. 
God, you give us all we need, rest, restoration, and our daily needs. We thank you and pray that you would bless these gifts and all that receive them. Remind them that they are fed by you and let them know that they are infinitely loved by you. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as our Lord taught, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We'll partake in communion at the same time, so I invite you to uh, open your little kit and remove your wafer. Hear these words spoken for you, the body of Christ given for you, Open your juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's eternal grace. Amen. We'll now sing our sending hymn, Have No Fear, Little Flock.
Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. startle you when I came in here to turn on the lights? <laughs>
sneak in and sneak out, right?